phone had reminded me. I'm like, oh, wait, but it's only halftime. What the fuck? Yeah, my phone reminded me, and I'm like, I am literally in the middle of, like, Dragon Age Inquisition's most important story point. Shit. Oh, seriously? And I need to take a shower. <laughs> oh, gotta love that. Oh, man. Oh, you rolling dirty? No, no. No, no. I got I got you. No, 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 no. Splash some no, stuff no, in my no, pants. No, I'm good. No, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, no, no. No, no, no. I gotta, I gotta look good for all the... All the TVGP ladies and gents, you know. Mostly gents. I'm an aqua, aqua teen shirt. I haven't really shaved. My mustache is in my mouth, but who's counting? <sighs> kind of digging out. This is kind of getting a little long, like right. right oh, there, there you go. A little D'Artagnan. Right there. <laughs> easy, easy there, Dumas. <laughs> <laughs> it's Dumas. <laughs> it's uh, just now. What's going on now? Everything's better when you got a mustache. It's true. That is true. So I'm told. All right, retweet that stuff. Has either one of you guys seen the? Are we are we streaming yet? Uh huh. Yep. Oh okay. Has anyone seen that video for that song, Radioactive? No. The Imagine Dragons song? Yes. No, I've never seen the video. I'm so Holy fucking sick of that song. Shit. Yeah. Agreed. Well, I. <clears throat> I, I mean, I, they were talking about, we were arguing about the lyrics on that song. Why, cause why not? Because who cares about that song, so let's argue about it. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So, uh, you can just mute it here. Like YouTube. I gotta find that. This new Skype is killing me. Is it rough? I just refuse to upgrade it. It's just, it's not... So like what I like to do on the on the stream is have it look really clean since I have you guys side by side, um, and I'm having trouble doing that now. <sighs> oh, okay, hold on. I'm gonna get the Cooper out of here. I was about to say you're gonna make it. <laughs> All right, buddy, come on. All right, All right. Oh, you're bored. I I was shocked at how violent this video was. Please. Mm. Alright, I have it muted. Put it on here. So while I'm watching this, um, I actually, uh, my wife and I watched uh, Guardians of the Galaxy last week. Oh, it's so oh, I love that, that movie. Was, that was a really good movie. I enjoyed that a lot. I love that movie. <laughs> so my, my favorite part of that movie that's, and apparently this ad is just blisteringly loud in my brain. <laughs> <laughs> um... No, my favorite part of the movie, that what sums up that entire group to me, is right after they have that incident in the Collector's mm -hmm. uh, Sanctuarium, mm -hmm. where he comes out and Rocket looks at him and like, what do you still have it for? <laughs> I loved that. Why do you still have that? <laughs> is this Muppet Professional Wrestling? Oh, it, watch it. It's bananas. I'm, I don't really understand what's happening here. I don't I, understand I, in a minute. That, that movie was... I was genuinely surprised. Like, what's a raccoon? What's a raccoon? That's what you are, dummy. <laughs> what's with Giving Tree here? Yeah. Like, there's oh, so yeah. many great... Back up off me, Ninja Turtle. <laughs> uh, I mean, there I, were so many great moments in that movie. I loved it. I got a new TV um, the other day, and that's the first thing I put on. And I was like, oh. oh. It's so nice. real pretty. Oh, that is by far one of the most colorful movies I've seen in a long time. So this video turned from a really interesting thing into pretty much the dumbest thing ever. And now this dude is banging on this drum in, like, this farm. What is happening? It oh, gets crazier. just wait. It gets, it, by the end of it, you're like, what the hell did I just watch? So for everyone that's just tuning in, well, nobody's watching. <laughs> um, we are watching the video for Imagine Dragons Radioactive. It's it's like pit fighting Muppets. Yeah. It... Oh, like it's now the... there's a pink one. And now the ad on this video is Billy Corgan answers questions. Yes. I'm okay. <laughs> Thank you, Billy Corgan. No thanks, guy. <laughs> Is there an is are there other members of the band besides this lead singer and his drum? I don't think so. 
Well, apparently, uh, Lou Diamond Phillips decided to make an appearance. I, I, yeah, I that's ventured, weird. I venture to guess that this is part of uh, part of the Sci Fi Network's new thing. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's the only thing he works for anymore. Oh, now bad CG is happening. Oh my god! Oh, me and my drum singing oh, next to my drum. They freed us. Oh, there's the rest of the band. Maybe you guys should have just stayed were in they, the basement. Were they down <laughs> in the basement the whole time? Yes. What? Okay, now this pink bear has laser eyes? Yes. Oh, yeah. <sighs> oh, they're after playing in after, the basement. Okay. Yeah. No, not get, the trap door. After they get the in the, uh, whatever. Whoa, acting. Oh, I fell. Whoa. <laughs> That is not what I was expecting. I I know. That's right. It's just three went all soul glow or uh what should we call it? Spirit bombed them. Yeah. <laughs> God, this video. As if I, I didn't like them good. enough. Yeah. <laughs> I love his little dog puppet though. Yeah. I want one of those. Don't encourage him. I love that it's like the hipster stoner eyes on the the Care Bear there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ugh, okay. <laughs> and that might have been one of the dumbest videos I've seen in a long time. Now that I'm in the weirdest possible headspace for this podcast. Yes, yeah. let's start! <laughs> Alright, you guys ready? Sure. <laughs> I don't we're, think I... We're getting off the prison bus. <laughs> Why you're there, no one knows. God damn it. <laughs> You're fired. <laughs> We're shutting the show down. We made it a good seven years. We're done. Actually, I think we just had our seven-year anniversary. Yeah, I know. Uh, it would have been last month. Recently, yeah. yeah. Oh, well. Yay, we did it. Just wake me up at 10. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we uh, might remember that number combination. Probably not. <laughs> 2017, get back to us. Yep. All right, let's get started in three, two, one. Welcome back to another episode of That Video Game Podcast. I'm your host, Boston. Going around the room, we have Nobs. What's up? And we have the Hannah. It's pretty wet. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure what I'm doing here anymore. So. I, don't, I don't know <laughs> what is happening in my life anymore. Uh, we've we've oh, made some watch decisions. Watch the chemicals, man. And we got two the episodes chemicals. of this to do today. This is going to be a real long day. Uh, yeah, it's going to be real interesting. I need more coffee. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, let's get started with knobs. What have you been up to? Get, get my bop going. Yeah, get your get yourself well quaffed here. All right, wiggle cool. It. Right. Wiggle it. Hey, what's up? Hey. All right, well, I guess we'll start with the same thing. Monday, Monday, Friday night, Battlefield is just a a ridiculously fun time. People just please just come join us because there's no way to describe what happens on there. Which the start of the show is weird because of a carryover from what happened on Friday night where we literally literally argued for an hour about the meaning of the music the lyrics to the song Radioactive by that what's the name of that band? I don't know the name of the band. Imagine Dragons. Imagine Dragons. Dragon. Yeah. If anything watched. can date this show. Yes. It will be Imagine Dragons because yes. they'll hopefully be gone. Yeah, that was that was sold uh, oh, really? what two thousand and odd or whatever. <laughs> yeah, so I, we can guarantee you will not have more fun on a Monday than Monday night game night. No, or a Friday night. Well, I guess you could have more fun on a Friday night, but if you're sitting at home and you have nothing to do, you need to come join us because it That's is true. a blast. And we have no control over flies out of Donnie's mouth, so yeah. And it is comedy gold across the board. It's gold, Jerry. Um, you know, again, like the, something about that game just has those little those little moments in it that happen almost every time we play that. Something stupid and ridiculous happens. You're like, this is why we still play this game. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I think it was maybe Thursday night or Friday night, uh, it was just Scott and I rolling around and we were playing the Snow Maps, the, the newest expansion pack. I don't even know what it's called at this point. So, and we were having, I think Friday night, we were having our best 
the two of us collectively in four rounds killed probably 250 people. Jeez. Like, we were just a murder brigade. Just mowing them down. Like, I think last the last night, I think when I called the quits, I was like, I threw up a 37, and I was MVP. I'm like, I'm out. I can't, I can't nice. top it. Hey, leave I'm it on a high note. Walked out, Costanza, right out the front door. They're just done. Leave them laughing. Uh, thanks, everybody. See you next week. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget to tip the waitress. But, um, but yeah, like even like that night when we were running around, like I had just jumped into this game. Uh, I came in late. I was maybe like halfway through, and somehow during the course of this, I rattled off like twenty four kills. I'm like, I did not feel like that good of a round for me because it's yeah. usually a good round for me. Usually, I'm hovering around twelve to to fifteen, eighteen on average. Not really lighting it up, but this night I was like just a walking carbine death. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it take it, I love taking random pot shots. I don't, I don't use any guided rocket launchers anymore. I just use that RPG. Just because it's fun just to kind of eye it up and poof. Ah, I just missed them. Like it's, oh, it's so many are just close. And I loved, I shot a random one off from the top of this mountain. I picked off this guy just kind of hovering there. <laughs> I wish I wish my connect was still connected. Get it, I gotta get myself connected. Um, hey, oh, um, <laughs> we're available anyway, for marketing research. I am all over, <laughs> all over the board right now, but no, I did. I killed five people in this chopper, it was awesome. Jeez, it was awesome. But, uh, but the moment, the moment during those rounds was when I went to go knife this sniper that was just laying out in the middle of this field, just completely unguarded. And as I'm jumping down to him, this snowmobile just comes and clips me off of him. Like, I've never <laughs> seen that, ever. That's phenomenal. That, and I, there's something about the random jets crashing into stuff that just makes that game always a joy to play. Just full-on bananas. Well, because you're just running through a field, and all of a sudden you're, sure, like, <laughs> <laughs> I guess you forgot to pull up, buddy. Like, yeah. Well, the mountains look the same as the sky. And so oh, it's it's fun, so. and the, and then we were playing with the mana pults like crazy on that final sand map. The mana pults are so much fun. I still don't know how to aim these things, but I always like either I land short or way too far. Like I, there's no happy medium. Yeah, mm-hmm. and there's no way to eject them out, eject yourself out of it once you're sailing off the map. But <laughs> it's it's a blast. It, it's an absolute it's an absolute riot. Um. The other game I played a lot of this week was uh, Power Star Golf. I was kind, of, I was kind of in the mood just to play something and listen to music while I'm playing. Yeah, and yeah. golf games are perfect for that. Oh yeah, you know, snap your little playlist off to the side and just have at it. Um, yeah, nothing too spectacular happened in that. I had a couple bad rounds. I didn't stream any of it. I waned myself from playing Halo this week because I just could not deal with that aggravation. <laughs> <laughs> I heard they finally fixed it too. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but did they fix Halo? Uh, yeah. I'm going to go with probably not. Okay. Yeah, so did you really do a single player? No, I doubt it. Yeah. So I, I just was just done. But now you like, can play the game, so you know we're yeah. making progress. Yeah, slowly but sure. I'm still trying. Hopefully by the time we record again, I may have played some more. Maybe have made it through Halo 1. Maybe. <laughs> You have about another I month. Hear, <laughs> I hear this series gets better, but... I don't uh, know. Two. Have you, did you ever play 2? Uh, I played a little bit of 2, and I tapped out real quick on that one. Yeah, I yeah, think... Don't finish 2. Just sort of skip it and maybe read the Wikipedia entry. Yeah, 2 oh, is... Yeah, but something don't, don't you finish the fight in 2? Uh, no. no. <laughs> See, that's where you start the I have, fight, and then you finish it in 3. I'm but waiting for that good. rage moment where that thing just ends, and you're like, What? <laughs> See, the best part about the Master Chief Collection is you just start three then. Yeah. Yeah. With no, like, six year hiatus. Yeah, or whatever. no rage necessary. I'm, I'm no. looking forward to it, to be honest with you. Yeah, <laughs> just, <laughs> I, it's one of those things, like, I, I've heard so much about it, but I've never seen, like, I've heard two things about Halo 2. One is finish the fight credits, and then the other thing is talking plant monster. And I've never <laughs> seen either one of those, and I, I'm kind of curious. <laughs> That's the whole reason why I even attempt, like, why I picked this up. Plus, I got it really cheap. But yeah. it's, I, I have to know what everyone's talking about. And so far, I am severely underwhelmed. It's like a, it's an academic exercise. Yes. It's I'm like, trying, 
I'm trying to better myself by rounding out my FPS. We'll see how the other people live. Yeah. Oh, I'll see how you guys then. walk in a walk a mile uh, in their Spartan boots. I'm trying. I'm trying real hard. <laughs> but yeah, we're talking a lot about a game that I didn't even play this week. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, and then lastly, since I needed to get some of some venting, I figured I'd play a perfect game for that. Asura's Wrath. Oh, nice. Man. Oh, I love that game so much. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's, what makes me sad playing that game is we will never see another game like that ever again. No. No, you won't. That game is so brilliant. People I love it. People still talk about that game because some people are still upset about that DLC. Really? Like the like, quote-unquote finish the story DLC for seven bucks. Like pe- mm. Some people are still... Still in a bunch about that, and it's like you guys gotta let it go. Like we let horse armor go, I think you can let yeah. this DLC go. No, Everything is over. Been, the, the game, the game, vanilla game has a good ending. It has a satisfying ending to it. Yeah, it's just the the ending that it that it possibly could have was so over the top. I'm glad that was DLC mm-hmm. because it was mind blowing. It's like a director's cut. It's like, yeah, well, exactly. we had another ending, and it didn't focus well with, you know, viewer groups. It's it's like it's like the director's cut of Apocalypse, Apocalypse Now. Apocalypse mm-hmm. Now was an amazing movie. And how adding 45 minutes to it makes it better, I didn't make any sense to me, like, logistically. <laughs> but it does. Yeah. <laughs> but that game just... I really enjoyed just playing that game. And with the, uh, the automatic counter uh, gauge on it, I can't remember which which character gauge that is. It that make, makes the game makes you feel so much like a badass. Yeah, like it is the best thing in the world. Like everything comes at you, you just counter it. Don't yeah. worry about no it. big deal. Don't nice. worry about it. It makes you burst meter grow so fast. Oh, it's it's great. Oh, man. <laughs> I that game just I love the look of that game, and I forgot how amazing the the Brumastra looked in that in that game. Uh, the giant like own cannon thing that's oh, in yeah. space man that's such a cool looking game and the yeah. sheer size of it is outstanding yep. like that is the one thing like uh when you when you fight the the big fat guy the wizen mm-hmm. like that fight where he grows to be like a giant and then he becomes bigger than the planet and comes down with that just one god finger. finger yeah it's such a great moment in games like i love that moment you know, it reminds me of um, one of my favorite anime series, Gurren Lagann, where, like, it there's this escalation of size, where in Gurren Lagann, you'd watch an episode, and we're like, wow, that was that thing is stupid huge, and in the next episode, it's like, oh, yeah? This thing's ten times bigger. It's like, okay, this is episode five. Episode 26. Yeah. It's like, well, now I have something that's impossibly huge. Isn't it cool? It's like, yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's like that cool, that cool thing from Invader Zim where they're flying the planets at each other, the moon and Mars, are yeah. turned into spaceships. Like, it's like, <laughs> just going to roll it around the planet's surface, you know, just dumb stuff. Yeah. Like, I love it. But uh, that game, I mean, it still looks fantastic. Even though even on, in this age, you're still, you still, you're, you're noticing a lot of the jaggies because of the... The hardware difference. Yeah. Um, something you didn't notice at all the first time playing that game through. But with, um, man, I would love to see a completely up version of that game. Oh, yeah. And it just makes me wish I was playing Bayonetta 2. <laughs> it really does. Yeah. But I, I, I'm i probably going to play and finish that game tonight because it is it is awesome. That is one of my favorite games of probably the last generation. And it's one that I knew was going to be one of my favorites, like, even before going into play. How many times have I played that demo? Like, 30? <laughs> uh, quite a lot. <laughs> but I love it. I love that game. Everyone should... I think that's a game, if you if you like video games, that, that's one of the ones that need to be in your collection. Like, yeah. it's just... It, it's such a rare gem. Well, and it's such a, a singular game. No other oh, yeah. game has been like that. We will certainly never get another game that's exactly like that. And that's awesome. And I don't think anything could really imitate it. No. And I was walking through Best Buy the other day because I was thinking about picking something up, and I, 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 I caught myself. I don't need to buy a $500 shirt steamer because that's I don't need probably that. probably the case, yeah. But it but, was cool, I bet. 
It was. It was a big swoosh thing. It was, oh, nice. It's like a big, like, it's like this tall, and it's got this big, you the hanger in it. You slide it in. 15 minutes later, you got a press shirt. Like, wow. ooh, that seems awesome. Yeah. yeah. I don't think it's worth $500. The thing is, like, every shirt I've bought lately is anti-wrinkle. <laughs> yeah. I did that, too, but, I mean, I upgraded the wardrobe lately, and, like, everything, like, more, looks like I talk. I always talk. Oh, uh, like, okay. Like, so, I'm like, that ring nope. around that. I don't know. They haven't rocked a lot of sweater vests lately. Oh, nice. Know. That's always a good look. It's, it's a good look. Not I, kind of, look. I love Not the t-shirt. I love the t-shirt hoodie. That's like my new thing. Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> Got to stay graphic, warm. Like a classic graphic tee and a t-shirt hoodie. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable and warm. <laughs> there you go. But... A Sir's Wrath. I don't care. Find that game. Play it. It's awesome. It's it, Each playthrough is super short. It will not take you a lot of times, and there's a lot of replay value. It, oh, yeah. Just go get it. You can always do better in that game. Oh, yeah. And it is bananas. And if you've never experienced that, the rage that that character has, and justifiably, oh, yeah. it is awesome. Oh, it's so good. So that, that's how I capped off this week. All right, Hannah, what have you been playing, and why is it A Sir's Wrath? <laughs> uh, I haven't been playing a serious wrath. Uh, the better question oh. is, uh, what have you been playing, and why is it still Destiny? <laughs> oh man! Uh, I wanted to try and hit thirty before the DLC came out uh, this week, and that's just not going to happen. Uh, no, that's I need, really like, tough to do. Yeah, I need like twenty-four ascendant shards, mm. and mm. I I need to like replace at least one. I think at least one piece of my gear needs to be replaced with an exotic. Nah. Yeah. Uh. Hmm. Yeah. No. I don't. I. Uh, nope. I gotta. I did get my first exotic bounty though. Oh, nice. Which uh, one? I. I forget what it was. Um. I did. Haven't even started it. You have to like find like the the fire team on Venus or something like that to kick it off. Hmm. I don't remember the name of it. Oh, I don't remember. I haven't. One. Yeah. I haven't started Maybe it. Maybe that's yet, the but... only one I haven't done. <laughs> There's just one out there that I haven't done. Yeah. That's pretty crazy. Um. But yeah, I've been playing a ton of Destiny. I've been trying to keep up with like daily quests, and I've been trying to grind out, you know, some public events so I can get, you know, Vanguard marks. And I've almost actually hit the the max of Vanguard marks for this week. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's just it's real fun. But I need I I'm sort of excited for this DLC because I need some something different, at least for a little while. I um. um I, I got a new TV this weekend, and one of the first games I fired up was Destiny, just to yeah. see, like, you know, the colors and kind of the general thing. And I didn't realize I'd never patched it to 1.03. Oh. Um, so I fired up, and I was like, wow, they they considerably changed this game, kind of yeah. for the better, for a lot of these collection issues, you know, for yes. a lot of grinding uh, stuff. So that, that was that was kind of nice. Yeah, it's definitely a welcome change. There's still some grinding that you have to do. I mean, you're not sure. going to just, you know, get certain things right off the bat, but a lot of it has been condensed. Well, and I feel like they removed a lot of the really terrible ones, like um, grinding for planetary materials. Like when yeah. you do the daily quest for that planet, like you do the, the, for those that haven't seen it, if you do like the Cosmodrome one, after you're done with doing like the six patrols, you get ten uh, uh, spin metal. Um, yeah. And then you can turn in Vanguard marks and um, the other, the Crucible marks for um, each planetary collection material, too. Which, yeah. the ratio, like the the exchange rate isn't super great, but no. you, if you like to play the Crucible especially, you can, you can uh, upgrade your equipment pretty easily through that system. So, yes. It's kind of, and little stuff too, like, they realized that it was really hard to tell when you had a, a grenade available or, like, your melee skill available. Mm -hmm. um, so now, in, when, you're, when your grenade or your melee is available, it's that little icon is blue now instead yeah. of gray. Like, because before Which it was, like, nice. dark gray or light gray. Um, so it's little stuff like that where it's kind of... It's kind of those changes where it's sort of like, all right, you, you guys are listening. You know, you, you yeah. very much have communication problems, but you're at least listening. Yeah, and the one thing I think they need to add eventually is a map. Mm -hmm. An yeah, in-game yeah. map. That is, would be super nice. because That would be super great. I go to destinypublicevents.com and I use their yeah. map. Yeah, <laughs> there's an Android app and I use that. Yeah, and it's kind of unfortunate because even if they had like... 
a flow chart that you could mm-hmm. open up and say like, well, this mission has you go to the rocket yards and you're oh. in this one area. Like which which of the two directions do I go and how many zones away is that? Yes. That's it. Yeah, because, I mean, all the zones, it's like, it, it, for every single zone, it's pretty much just a U-shape. Yep. You start at, like, the bottom of it, and you can go either left or right, and it's, you know, some some of them wrap back around, most of them don't. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, that's, like, the one little tweak I would make to that game to make it way better. And why they didn't think they needed a map for this game is real confusing. Yeah, I, it, it's one of those things. Oh, because their radar is so good. <laughs> you know, it, I think it's one of those things where... You know, I know a lot of developers are are sort of saying, like, well, you'll just learn the game as you play it. And it's like, right, but I so often run into stuff where I'm like, I'm doing um, patrols on the moon. I'm in Archer's line, and it wants me to go to this other area. And I was like, I don't know which way to go. And yeah. it, it would take me two minutes to get to the area if I went the right way. It would take me 15 if I went the wrong way. Yes, so. and they're they're you know the pointers for the radar are great when you're actually doing the missions, but when you're just it's sitting around thing. trying to find public events and it, uh, you know the only indication you have is okay, this is the area it's in. It's like okay, I don't know where that is. Yeah, I need to get to the divide, and I'm in Skywatch. Where do I need to go? Yeah, uh, yeah, I I actually do like the little arrow on the the mini map. Um, mm-hmm. Once, once since of course they don't explain it. Once you kind of figure out its logic, I feel like yeah. it works pretty well. Yeah, it sort of resets itself as you get to certain points. Um, yeah, which could be a little bit better explained, but yeah. um, I guess that's destiny, mostly. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, I don't know. That game still has... I still have a lot of fun playing it, but it, it yeah. still needs a lot of TLC here and there mm-hmm. for a lot of seemingly minor stuff. And I'm I'm really hoping the DLC, that the first expansion that comes out this week, I really hope that it starts uh, kind of a second life for that game. You know, they, yeah. they there's this big hullabaloo about the change of exotics and, and upgrading your exotics and trading them in and all that stuff. Yeah. Which I don't even want to delve into here because it's a little... I, it's almost inside baseball for Destiny it, at this point. It really is. Um, and that's sort of the point I'm at with this game. I'm almost ready to say, yeah, I played Destiny next, next game. Yeah, I got really far. I'll go back in for the expansions. It was fun. You know, yeah. like for me, like I did the raid, the first raid mm-hmm. a couple times, like two or three times. And after that, I'm sort of like, OK, I mean, either I need to start farming this thing hardcore or I go play other games. Like when this new raid comes out, I'd love for us to get a group together and yeah. and do it at least a couple of times to at least see it. But then I'm kind of good. Like I, I was in a <laughs> hardcore raiding guild in WoW in like 2008. Like I think I've done I've been there. I've done it. I'm I'm yeah. okay. I put in my time. <laughs> yeah, back in 2000 late. Mhm. <laughs> yeah. Uh but yeah, Destiny's still real good. I got into a group with a couple of uh, randoms. I was about to start the daily uh heroic qu- um story mission. Uh, it was the it was the last mission of the game, the Black Garden, oh, okay. and I was literally about to step into the zone, and they were like, "Hey, we're gonna do it on um, you know higher difficulty, you know three people, higher difficulty, better rewards." I got a couple uh, legendary items out of it. It was really nice. nice. So was, that's the first experience I've had with just random dudes in a while that wasn't like, "Oh, okay, whatever." Yeah, you it guys just, are the worst of really humanity. Good. Yeah, I, I think it seems to me like the majority of the people that are left still playing Destiny. Mm-hmm. Are probably people that are in it for the long run, or in it to play Destiny. Yeah, you know, it's not like I don't know. It's a first person shooter. Blah blah blah. You know, those those people are off playing the new Call of Duty. Yeah. You know. So yeah, played a bunch of Destiny. Um, I also played a whole bunch of Sonic and All Stars uh, Racing Transformed. Yes. <laughs> on both PC, uh, thanks to uh, in the forums, uh, I forgot your to name that. here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so I got that. I got the, someone gifted me the uh, the Sega uh, Humble Bundle that was oh, out nice. recently uh, on the forums, and I'm so sorry. I'm looking up your name now. I'll mention it in just a moment. Man, the PC version of Sonic uh, Transformed looks so good, and it's yeah. Like absolutely, if I feel like if someone wants to understand what stable sixty frames a second is, it's that. play that game. It yeah. is rock solid. There is some nuts, banana stuff happening on screen. 
that engine does not care. It's it just going to keep it 60. So it's uh, Toph Bay Fong on the forums. Okay. Uh, he's new, only two posts, but thank you very much. Yeah, that was very nice. Uh, thank you. That was really cool. Uh, I actually had it already for Vita, and it looks really good on Vita, and it's mm. a smooth 30 on Vita, but it's still it's it's 30. Yeah, it's kind of like... <laughs> It's it's kind of funny because I'm usually not like, I usually don't care that much about frame rate. I care about it more than I care about other graphical stuff. Like if yeah. you can like if you're promising a solid frame rate, be it thirty or sixty, and you keep that promise, I'm gonna like you. Yeah, I feel like that's one of those games though where, you know, like uh, Mario Kart Eight on the Wii U uh, holds 60 pretty regularly too. Yes. And I feel like with those cartoony sort of racers, I feel like. With the colors and with the graphics and everything, it really helps it kind of sell the craziness. Yeah, because it's just it's moving and whirring and just everything's going crazy. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Sonic and All Stars is pretty great. I think one of my favorite things that it does, um, besides all the like the little stuff like leveling up the individual racers mm -hmm. and um, you know having all these Sonic characters and all these crazy tracks from obscure games. Yeah, like you want a Billy Hatcher track? It's like yeah, no, but okay, this thing's yeah, pretty cool. I, that Billy Hatcher track's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, my favorite thing it does is the non-standard <laughs> laps. So you'll have like three laps in a race, and you'll go around once, and it'll be okay. That's cool. And then you go around a second time, and it's like slightly different. There'll be a section maybe where you're in a boat or you're mm -hmm. flying. Yeah. Uh, or the best one is when it's like two normal laps and then a crazy third lap. Yeah. Like the like track just, completely changes. Yes. Yeah. And that's like, I think that's really the biggest thing yeah. for me. That's what I like about it most is it keeps you on your toes. Yeah. Man, that uh, game is so good. I, that I, game is real good. I played the <laughs> crap out of the first one because I reviewed it um, mm -hmm. and loved every minute of it. Um, yeah. And the second one is just as good if not better I, I know some people are some people were kind of uh s had a, a split opinion about the transforming cars um, yeah but it's really great the and for, unfortunately the battle mode was never really great in those games the, no. it, it's fine but it's kind of not the mario kart that you want it to be everything else fun. is but not the battle <laughs> mode which is kind of funny yeah, and it's really just, it's a beautiful game. It's got some, if, if you're ever, you were ever a Sega fan, you'll go, oh my god, I can't believe they put that person in here. Yeah. Or, oh man, I can't believe they made that track. Yeah, I can't believe I'm playing as that red and blue ship from that one Master System shooting game. Yeah, <laughs> I can't believe I'm, fly, I'm flying around in a Skies of Arcadia level. <laughs> yeah. yeah, stuff like that where it's like, thank Is goodness someone... Is there a space level? Uh, no, I, don't know. I, don't think, I think in is. the first one there was a yeah, man. There was something about Space Harrier in the first one. I don't think it was a level, but I think it was. Oh, I don't remember. It's been a while since the first one came out. Yeah, and it's just it's such a cool game. Yeah, I would definitely recommend anyone anyone who has PC pick it up. It's um, so cheap on Steam. It's just a couple of bucks. Yeah, it's less than ten dollars. I think I'm gonna look it up. Yeah, so it's uh, it, that was definitely something I played a whole bunch of um, on the Vita, especially because it's just like, oh, I'll do a couple of quick laps. Um, but the last game I played this week was the Telltale Game of Thrones game, Episode 1, Iron from Ice. Oh, All right, I had this in my bin, and I kind of backed off a little bit. How is it? I, I like it. It's a Telltale game. Uh, did it's you a Telltale finish game. it? Yes. Okay. Uh, and yeah, yeah, that's a Telltale game. Yeah, for a sort of better or worse. Do they have a kind of terrible action sequences? Uh, actually, the action sequences are some of the best I've seen. Oh, really? Because the ones yeah. in Tales of Borderlands are not great. Yeah, these are really like straightforward, and like the interface for it is really subtle but effective. Hmm. Um, it's just these simple like left right arrows, and you've got the standard like mash the button and then you know press this button. Yeah. Uh, there wasn't a lot of. They weren't terrible, you know. Good. Like I've seen them done worse. The some of the ones at the beginning of um, Tales from the Borderlands is like, all right, you have a red screen and there's a red reticle. You need to drag it onto this other red thing and hit R two. Yeah. And it's sort of like, who, why, how, why? Like I'm not colorblind and I can't see this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's a lot of um, moments in this one where it's like, ah, there's no good decision to make here, which is kind of why I like some of these. Mm -hmm. 
Um, because you get the like the first major decision you get, it's like, uh, there, there's no happy ending here. Yeah, nobody. No matter wins. what I do, there's no happy ending. Nobody and wins. Everybody dies. And that's that's my only real gripe with uh, the very tail end. At the very end, you make a bunch of decisions um, around uh, something that happens as, as like the the end of the game. And before that happens, you have to make a series of like sort of. Like it's, you're just deciding on minutia, mm. and I, from what I understand, no matter what you pick, it doesn't really have an effect on the ending. Hmm. Uh, I'd be interested to see what happens if I went back and did a couple of different decisions uh, to see if certain things around that ending would change. But my understanding is the way that episode ends is just how that episode ends. Yeah, uh, um, pretty games of throny. It, yeah, very much. It's a very Game of Thrones ending. Um, if if you want uh, <laughs> spoilers, I'd, I'd gladly spoil it. But it's only been out. It's been out for less than a week. Yeah, so. I don't. I don't think we should. Um, so. so for me, as someone who's not well versed in the books or the show whatsoever, mm -hmm. do you think this would have any effect on me? Does it? Does it sort of? ease you into the Game of Thrones world, or is it kind of assuming you've at least watched the show? I think it's, there's a little, there's a lot of assumption there. Okay. Um, they sort of, uh, yeah, there, you'd probably have to at least watch the show. Mm -hmm. um, so this sort of takes place between the end of season three and the beginning of season five. Oh, geez. So it starts at the very end of season three. <laughs> so it's like all the way deep in the show. Yeah, so yeah. you'd have to like get way into it. Um, I mean, I, I could see someone who uh, doesn't watch the show or hasn't read the books possibly enjoying it, but there's such a, a large group of scenes and the characters that you meet, like, that's sort of what makes it cool. Is like you meet the characters from the show it sounds, at several points. It sounds a lot like what I was talking about with Persona Q last week, where it's sort of like, look, you know Persona 3 and 4 because you played these. We're, we're, yeah. There's just no intro. Like, it, all the gang's back together, yay! You know, like, yeah. it sounds like it's kind of like that. Where it's like, yeah, you know, these guys, Peter Dinklage, isn't he cool? Yeah, alright, let's keep moving. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, um, come on, Peter Dinklage kind of awesome. Uh, Peter, Peter Dinklage, Dinklage is pretty amazing. cool. Uh, you know, it, I, that's kind of disappointing as someone who likes uh, Telltale's games, typically, that, that, um, that that's the case. But I, yeah. I can respect it for them going deep into the show instead of sort of saying, like, season one you know and like it it's kind yeah. of telling this other story that's really deep i can respect that i like it i liked it a lot especially as a fan of the show um if you're a fan of the show at least check out the first episode for five bucks you can't really go wrong yeah every telltale yeah. episode is five bucks like you're not gonna you're not gonna miss out yeah all right uh that's pretty much all i played this week though all right i uh so like i mentioned i got a new tv so i figured why not fire a Binding of Isaac Rebirth and play some of that? You know, clearly <laughs> the most why not? graphically punishing game. Um, <laughs> it's one of those things, it's funny, it's one of those things where, so I moved from a 40-inch um, Samsung TV that is around 10 years old now at this point, point. Yeah. Um, and I moved to a 55-inch uh, Samsung LED TV. Um, I before had an LCD, I think. Yeah. Um, well, the LED thing's the only backlight. It's the only thing that changes. Yeah, well, and it's a much better panel because my panel yeah. was very clearly dying. I, I had burn-in on an LCD screen. Like, it, it's dying. <laughs> um, so I fired up Binding of Isaac Rebirth, and I it's like that thing where you get new glasses, and you're like, wow, I wow. was blind. Yeah. Who let me drive a car? <laughs> it's that kind of thing where I fired up, and I was like, oh, this is... Wow, this game looks really great. I okay. There's a lot of detail here in this game that I was uh, completely missing. Um, so man, I made a ton of progress in uh, Isaac this week. Nice. Um, I am done with almost all of the characters um, except for the ah. very last one, which is so freaking tough. Oh, uh, is that the one hit kill one? Yeah, man. I just like. I was playing on Saturday, I think it was, um, after we finished recording Pup, um, and I was I was doing really well. I was like three levels down. I was I had some good items. Like it wasn't a crazy great run, but it was fine. And I go into one room and I get 
I noticed there's a beggar in there. So for for those that haven't played uh, Binding of Isaac, there's three types of beggars in the game. One takes coins, one takes okay. keys, and one takes hearts. And okay. you feed them those that stuff, and they'll give you items. And then if you feed them enough, they'll vanish, and they'll give you something usually pretty good. Like the coin Ooh. one, you feed them enough, and that value is, is pretty variable. And then they'll spit out something that gives you an extra heart. Um, so I passed by him because he was a dark colored one so I thought he was a one that uh, takes keys and I only had one key so I was going to go get the item and I come back and I forget he's in the room and I run mm -hmm. into him and he was a heart beggar he oh, takes no. half a heart and kills me oh no and I was just like oh. no <laughs> that's, <for tonight. laughs> that's brutal it's just one of those things where it's like god I just I just I was moving so fast I was just being dumb no, that was nobody's fault but my own. God, I love Bonnie of Isaac Rebirth. <laughs> oh man. Um, so still making my way through that. I'm, I am really trying to platinum that game. I, it, there's a lot of stuff left that I have to do that's tough, but it's not insurmountable with everything I've unlocked and everything I know in the game. So, I I genuinely think I'm going to give it a go. Okay. It might break me. I might never come back to this show because I have gone insane. But <laughs> I feel like if there's a large number of people that have already 100%ed that game, I I feel like I can do that. The two things that are going to kill me is there's two um, hidden indie characters in the game. One is Super Meat Boy and the other one is Bandage Girl. Ooh. It's really tough to build them throughout an entire Isaac run. Yeah. That is probably the part that's going to break me completely. I I have to figure out how to kind of game the system to completely uh build one of those. And I I see Jay Z is in chat, so hopefully he'll be able to help me out. Uh, he's my binding of Isaac uh brother I from another it. mother. Pat's a trainer in there. Oh man. I see that's the thing. I know there's a way that you can probably not really exploit the game, but maybe game it a little too much that I would feel comfortable for. Um, and I, I really don't want to do that. Ah, oh, man. Um, so the other game I, I played in, I, the reason why I was late for the, uh, the show today, because I was playing Dragon Age Inquisition. Um, today I started something that, uh, I thought would just take a couple of minutes, and then it turned out to be the second major story point in the game, which took me an hour and a half. <laughs> um... I was initially really, really upset at the direction that this game took and how anticlimactic this thing was. Obviously, which I'm not going to spoil it. Um, and then it immediately turned everything on its head and suddenly got all the way super cool. Nice. Um, so this game, in a matter of about 15 minutes, I was just like, man, this c come on. Like, that was supposed to be... And I was like, oh, wait, wait. Hold on. Now this is super cool. All right. Um, God, Dragon Age Inquisition is so good. I, I just... <laughs> I, f I think what's impressive... We talked a lot about it on Pup, uh, the episode that's out this uh, at the same time as this. Um, so I won't really belabor the point uh, here, but I feel like Inquisition is a much better game for them apologizing for Dragon Age 2. Like, so much of this game is they took the great parts of 1 and 2, and they smushed them together, and then they started apologizing about 2. And they're sort mm -hmm. of like, you know, we were talking about uh, Musum on Pup is, is playing through 2 for the first time, and one of the biggest problems in 2 is like, alright, I'm halfway through this game, which is like 20 hours, and I don't know what I'm doing. I have all these people mm. with me, I don't know why they're with me, I don't know what the bad guy is, because the bad guy hasn't shown up yet. Um, and the great part about Inquisition is from the very second that you hit new game, you know exactly what the bad guy is. Because the very first scene is the whole crux of this story. Nice. Like, all, like the bad guy being bad? Yeah, and it's <laughs> in a very impressive way. Um, is he a member of your party to start with? Like, has hey, the shifty eyed guy over here? No, <laughs> no, it's not. It's not KOTOR. Um, um, come on, that game is like 20 years old now. Everything's good. Um, 
But man, I'm <laughs> I'm like 25 hours through now, I think, and I've made the second of six big decisions. Um, this game is really great. I thought people were lying. They're like, yeah, my first playthrough, I didn't do anything, and I played like 90 hours. I wow. don't think that's wrong. I think wow. that's right. <laughs> and I can't imagine how much time this game will take if you do everything. And that's awesome. Because everything... That's pretty great. They really stuffed this game full of a lot of cool stuff. And a lot of it is really fun. So Well, they kind of had to after Skyrim. I mean... Yeah, but I, I think... I, I never really... I don't really see this game as a as a response to Skyrim. Because the two games are, are so different. Skyrim for me is... You don't, you don't care about the battle system. You care about the story. Yeah. And I feel like with you really don't want to care about the battle system because yeah. you will quit. <laughs> I'm 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 slicing crabs. Yay, Skyrim. Um I feel like with Dragon Age it's <laughs> you were killed by a mob of rats. Yeah. I feel like with Dragon Age there's a a really good balance of the two. Like the story is really good and it's really well written, but if you kind of want to ignore it, you you can. You don't have to really go knee deep in it. And then the battle system is really great. If you're just playing like the standard controller style, like the Dragon Age 2 style. But if you really want to get deep and do like the Baldur's Gate pull up top down stop time yeah. style, you can totally do that too. So I, I feel like Dragon Age uh, Inquisition has been really good about balancing how deep you want to get. Like if you want to play Dragon Age 2 and you just want to cut a bunch of stuff for 30 hours, yay, Dragon Age, I, that was fun. But if you want to really like RTS it, for 90 hours to 150 hours, you totally can. Where I feel like with Skyrim, the only way to make that game's battle system more interesting is to make the difficulty harder, but that yeah. doesn't really fix the problem. Yeah, with Skyrim, you're not so much fighting the other characters as you are just sort of fighting with the controls and like, oh, that should have hit him. I didn't hold the bow back long enough. I charged up my, you know, charge attack too long. It's just, it's it's clunky. Yeah. It always yeah. has been. There's yeah. no, it's it's like, look at Morrowind and you're like, okay, every Sky, every, you know, Elder Scrolls after Morrowind has had a better combat system. Yeah. But, you know, Oblivion and Skyrim both had this issue of like, yeah, it's good but it's not it's kind of clunky and boring and it's just sort of in my way yeah and i you know there's there's some stuff that seems very you know open world skyrim I, this game is kind of hard to not call an open world game yeah because when you when you get to an area it's huge like you get a horse as a mount in this one that's how big each area is but there's I've seen so far about four or five of them, and I know I haven't gotten all of them. So, like, it's kind of this open world in chunks game mm. instead of it being like a Skyrim or GTA. And yeah. there is stuff that feels very open worldy in this game. Like, there's these things called asteriums where you go, you find them, you go up to them, and it, it it's like this telescope up to the heavens, and you draw this constellation. And then once you do that, it links to the other ones in the areas. Once, Sweet. You, once you do all of those, um, and they're totally optional, it opens up this dungeon in that landmass. And you go in there and you fight through a whole bunch of stuff. And at the bottom is a cool piece of uh, gear, some sort of cool loot. Sweet. So, like, and, and there are these, these shards throughout each area. And as you're gathering them, you get further and further in this, this temple in this oasis desert area. So, like, you'll you'll collect a whole bunch, and it's like, okay, you're ready to go through the next door in this area. And it's like, ooh, okay, cool, okay, cool. I got to go fast travel over to this other area because I want to see what's further in this temple. So they're doing a lot of cool stuff like that where if you want to do all of it, it's probably going to take a long time. And I'm assuming there's something super cool in the middle of the temple. I hope. Yeah. Uh, you more than hope. a trophy. Um, <laughs> 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 you know, there's just a trophy in the middle where it's like, good job. Thanks. Uh, Your Thetis is number one adventurer. Yay! Yay. <laughs> Put that right on the fridge. Oh, I um, hope it's one of those crappy mall ones, like where you just kind of get one of those little, like, those little placard, little yeah. trap trophy with a plastic piece and some some guy swinging a sword on the top. <laughs> no, it's just a it's just a normal kitchen fridge with a gold star on it. You're the best. <laughs> <laughs> so here's a ribbon. Yeah. But what? Um, I don't want to wear the ribbon. Um. 
You know, uh, so it it sounds, you know, Jay-Z in chat says, telescope, constellations, nope, nothing sounds like Skyrim here. You know, there are there are certainly um, parallels you can make for a lot of this stuff, but I feel like how Bioware does it is, is so far really fun and sort of different enough from Skyrim that if you love Skyrim, you'll, you might like Inquisition, but if you mm-hmm. don't like Skyrim... Or, that's fine. You don't. It's still just, Dragon Age. I was just drawing those lines just because of the length and the amount of stuff you could do. Yeah. Well, as far as you know, Dragon or Skyrim being nearly endless. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not. It's not a bad comparison. You know. It's just. Um, just pick your poison. Yeah. Basically. Yep. Yeah. Um, and that's all I've been playing this week. So let's take a break. Break. So Nobs, have you seen the gameplay trailer of Amplitude? Uh, I haven't. <laughs> right, I'll put it in. Um, I'll put it in. I'll put it in I'm, Twitch chat and uh, Skype here. Um, uh, I saw the, the gameplay of uh, Street the Street Fighter Five. Uh, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Um, did you like the place blue or no the Guilty Gear? <laughs> yeah, that's coming out pretty soon. Oh, I'm I gotta so take this little maniac that. outside. All right, so Nobs, I know you backed Amplitude, right? Yes. Go to Kickstarter, watch this video, and then go to Kickstarter. This is like a three-minute long video about um, all the single-player and multiplayer gameplay. Um, The Kickstarter site has a special one for backers that's ten minutes. Just like ten minutes of gameplay of the new Amplitude. And it looks so good. I do not understand what's going on my internets. Your Skype looks good. I don't get... It's giving me red bars. I mean... Weird. You haven't been dropping huh. or anything. Candy bars. <laughs> What's up, Samson? Uh, that's my baby. You don't lag, do you, buddy? No, you don't. No, you don't. I love... Um, I just... I was reading these GameSpot comments. I love people are like, this game looks so unfinished. It looks terrible. And it's like, it says at the top, pre-alpha demo build. If yeah. you don't know what that means, go look it up. Oh, did, uh, there's trolls everywhere. You just can't, don't stifle my excitement. So the other Jay-Z in chat says, I love Amplitude, but I just want more licensed songs. Uh, the new Amplitude is probably not for you then, because there are probably no licensed songs in this one. I don't care. Give me D. Uh, give me uh, HMX. So like, that's the thing is they're making, harmonics, guys. So there's two cool things. They're making the majority of the music in house, but also they're doing something cool that I didn't know until I watched that 10 minute long video, is that they're making all of the songs in this game like a concept album. So there's basically some sort of story that's going throughout the music, in the in the game and trying to tell some sort of interesting story. That sounds kind of cool. That sounds kind of awesome. And I love their house music anyway. Oh, it's... Yeah, you need to watch that 10-minute long video. It is... They they play about half of... Um, there's In the PlayStation Experience demo, there's, um, there's five songs. And they play about half of each song. And man, they are... Each one is so totally different. Oh, it's so cool. What do, you, what do you mean this game looks unfinished? This game looks gorgeous. Mm-hmm. So here's the cool thing. Um... On PS4, which, by the way, get a PS4 for Amplitude. Um, the light bar on the controller changes with each track and pulses with the beat of the music. Oh. So they're saying, like, if you play Amplitude, turn off the lights and your controller, like, totally turn off the lights and the controller should light up your entire room. And I'm like, man, can you just... Can, it just just they come need, out they now. Need to, they need to make more stuff. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Harmonix yeah, has been just... making a lot of stuff lately. It's just been a lot of weird stuff. Like, they came out with that uh, music-based shmup on Steam. Yeah, I remember that. I don't one, remember yeah. what that was called. It came out pretty recently. Which seemed okay. Oh, God. Yeah, I can't. I, I, I want to play it. So excited. It just looks so clean. Like I think it's, I think it's what we wanted, what we thought Amplitude on the PS2 looked like. Like this super clean, 
high def, high res stuff. Like even the background looks good in this one. And I, yeah. I, I'm sure they're gonna change what the tracks look like, but I kind of don't want them to. I like this cool like future neon, like Tron look. Oh man. That ten minute video they play it on expert too. So you can Ooh. actually see the, the difficulty. And he keeps up with the PS4 controller, even with those triggery business. That's gonna take some getting used to. Mm hmm I'm willing to put in the time. Uh Jay Z asked, did nobody discuss the goblins and gnomes Hearthstone expansion? I haven't I haven't even played it. Oh man. This is torture. What? They're up they're up nineteen twenty four with three minutes left. Oh no. I'm just gonna watch this video again. Yeah, here, and I'm like I'm watching it on like this like little thing. Oh jeez. <laughs> oh come on. Oh, Nobs, the other thing that they're talking about for Amplitude is um, when you get to the edges of the track, you can double tap the direction where it's there isn't a track, and you loop all the way around. And I was just like... Oh, that fixes the biggest problem. Whoa. And they said, like... They, I wonder if it did that in the original. We just never figured it no, out. No, they said it didn't. Cause they, so they said that they are, they're increasing... So this is all alpha stuff, so like some of the numbers can change. But they're increasing the multiplier to 10... Um, it was eight in amplitude. Yeah. Um, and they're saying they wanted a, an easy way to keep your um, uh, your multiplier going. Because if you if you went from left to right and then had to go all the way back left, usually you just screw up your multiplier. Oh! Fucking god! This song is a menace. Welcome back. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. The war, the war, the war, the war, the war, the war. They're coming outside. Everything, probably? It's like someone keeps driving. Whenever I go to record any show, it's like someone with a dune buggy decides to start driving around. Well, yeah, I mean, that's, uh, that's what you do in California, right? Doom that's buggies what, all the time. What happens if you live in Wales' vagina? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, try living in San Diego. You never forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a right. lot of news. There we go. <laughs> it's not that bad, actually. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, it's just PlayStation Experience stuff. Oh, yeah. there's some oh, there's some good stuff in there, though. Gems in there is some real good stuff. <laughs> all right, well, let's get started, then. All right, you guys ready? Yep. Yes. All right, ready in three, two, one. Welcome back, everybody. We got releases this week of December 8th, 2014. Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trilogy for the thirds. I, I got to say, yeah. they're missing a great pun in that line. Was it? This should have been Trilogy. Oh, oh That's nice. a good point. Marketing. We are available for consulting. <laughs> um, I, I said this on Pup, and I'll say it again. If you're interested in the Phoenix Wright games, buy this. It, these are the three best ones. Yes. It, it, the, <laughs> hands down, these all three of these are outstanding, both puzzle games and visual novels. They're amazing. They're so much fun. Oh, they're so good. And the I think it's only like 20 bucks. It's such a deal. Please you're losing money it. by not buying it. They're also on iOS. I think all three are on iOS now, too. So go play them. They're so good. <laughs> they're so much fun. Uh, Laura Croft and the Temple of Osiris for the PS4. I loved um, the Guardian of Light. Uh, yeah. TVGP alum Brad and I uh, played through that whole game co-op. I'm um, going to see if my, my wife wants to play co-op uh, with me on this one. It's a super cool top-down multiplayer puzzle co-op game that's uh, Laura Croft. They're really... The first one was really good and just an XBLA hidden gem. I really yeah. hope this one is good. Uh, Final Fantasy 13 2 for the PC. Uh, way better than 13. Um, really? And it's super dumb, a story about time travel. 
It has... So if anyone is going to play this for the first time, uh, it has Final Fantasy's, the series, worst minigame ever. It's this clock minigame that is all about math. It is nonsensical. There's a website where you can put the first number in, and it will just figure the whole thing out for you. Do not feel shame. Just go do that. Yes. It's the worst. Whoa. And rounding out our list, Blaze Blue Continuum Shift Extend for the PC. Uh, I think it's, I think that's like two games past, so I think the price is yeah. pretty low on that. Still a great nice. game. Yeah, it's not Zex Plus Third. What? No, <laughs> that's on Steam. Zerd. That's on Steam too. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm sure that's there. Uh, all right, let's move on to news stories. Uh, first Yay! off, Super Stardust Ultra was announced, uh, bringing new modes and new planets to PS4. Sweet. Uh, coming out early 2015 for only 13 bucks. Um, that, you know, that was maybe a launch game. Super Stardust HD was maybe a launch game for PS3. It says it mm -hmm. came out in 2007, so Ooh. maybe. Um, that game, that's one of the better, you know, that and, and Geometry Wars on 360. Yeah. Uh, those are some of the best twin six shooters out there right now. Yeah. Um, man, I, that's going to be really interesting to see what they do to kind of continue that game um hopefully hopefully good stuff uh all right let's get into the real meat of the news stories here two uh award shows slash experience things happened this week uh, yeah. the first one was uh jeff Keeley's new game awards 2014 uh this live streamed non-spike thing um which i have not had a chance to watch yet but apparently it's really good uh, yeah, yeah. And turned out really well and wasn't Spike, basically. Fantastic. Um, so, so no Joel McHale? I do not believe. <laughs> uh, so Nintendo showed off uh, the new Zelda game, um, which I haven't watched the trailer yet, but uh, apparently there's a, there was a lot of horse riding and a lot of cool uh, jumping off in slow-mo and shooting some arrows and stuff like Sweet. that. Sweet. Uh, looks great. Looks really, really, really good. I'm, I'm super excited for that. Uh, they showed off new m footage of uh, Mario Maker. Um, which, oh, sweet. Yeah, which I think we talked a little bit about at E3, where basically you make Mario levels. Um, mm -hmm. They showed off you can play, the graphics are either Mario 3 or Super Mario World. Um, and it has that weird sort of drop shadow thing that Nintendo does sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, curious to see what that game turns out to be, because I feel like Nintendo hasn't really talked a lot about it other than make Mario stuff. And it's like, yeah, but like which game's physics? Can I share it online? Is it like Little Big Planet where I can get levels? You know, like what what are you gonna do? Yeah, the the questions that throw Nintendo in the deer and headlights mode. Yeah, and they go, um, but it's Mario, so what what? Um so hopefully they'll have more about that uh soon. Um and surprisingly they showed off Project Steam, which is this crazy three DS uh, steampunk shooter game, um, which I don't know a ton about, uh, unfortunately, but I'm kind of surprised they they drug that out to show that off. I'm surprised they didn't show off Splatoon, um, which seems to be <laughs> Nintendo's kind of biggest thing they're throwing their weight behind now that Bayonetta 2 came out, um, which is odd. Um, uh, the Hannah just put something here in uh, chat that... Uh, Today, uh, Ralph Baer, the father of video games, just passed away at the uh, age of 92. Yep, creator of the Magnavox Odyssey. Yep. One of the, Ooh. like, formative... The guy video who game made machines. video games. <laughs> yeah, he, he's the reason a lot of the in-game, like, the in-home console stuff exists. Yep. Yeah, man. Uh, and that's, uh, that's really sad news. But, yeah, so uh, rest in peace, uh, Ralph Baer. That, for uh, sure. That's a super bummer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, so go back, going back to the Game Awards 2014 here, unfortunately, I have no good segue for that. Yeah. Uh, especially <laughs> since they shut off a Yay! bunch of Godzilla games. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, Kojima came to show off Metal Gear Online, which uh, comes with Metal Gear Solid V, The Phantom Pain. Um, it showed off some new stuff from The Phantom Pain. I am totally blacked out for that game right now, so... Yep. Don't know much about that. I'm sorry. I know I'm... Suppo Supposedly it's co-op. Man, this game. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, first dogs, now co-op? 
Come on. I know. Ah, <laughs> oh, all right. Um, and uh, surprisingly, game of the year uh, was Dragon Age Inquisition, um, which I that is... don't hmm. think I was expecting. No. I, I thought that would have been, like, Call of Duty or Destiny or something. I don't know. Like, Dragon Age feels a bit premature because it's so mm-hmm. new. Like, it just came out. But then again, they Especially probably have like a copies for, like, a 90-hour game? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hmm. And uh, funnily enough, uh, Trey Parker won for best performance uh, for South Park and <laughs> Sick of Truth. He said, quote, only in games could Trey Parker beat Kevin Spacey in acting, end quote. <laughs> <laughs> So, he does have a point. He does have a very good point. Um, but moving on to uh, something that's a lot more interesting and a way bigger than I was expecting, PSX 2014, the PlayStation Experience. Yeah. Sony just had E3. They just yeah, said, yep. hey, it's a Saturday in December. You want to <laughs> have E3? Because we're doing let's it. Let's have E3. Yeah. Um, so let's break down, because even in the keynote they, they showed a ton of stuff, and I'm we're not going to talk about everything, because that would probably take the rest of the day yeah. um, they showed a really long gameplay trailer for Uncharted 4, A Thief's End that game looks outstandingly, oh, incredibly shit. good, yeah, I mean gr- at the very least, graphically, but that gameplay man, that's that, solid, uh, that, that grappling hook takedown that was super cool. That was I, super cool. I am more than happy to land on a dude with my fists. Yep. <laughs> Man. Uh, that that game, I I never finished Uncharted 3 because that game kind of soured me, but oh, I, I got to get that game. <sighs> Looks Do okay. I own? I know I own the first two. You probably own all three. Yeah, uh, uh, <laughs> Uncharted 3 was free on PS Plus a while back. Yeah. Uh, next up, they showed a uh, trailer for Street Fighter V, the PS, PC and PS4 exclusive yeah. that features cross-platform play. Uh, yeah. It should be noted that uh, their language was, quote, debut exclusively on PC and PS4, so yeah. it'll be coming to Xbox One eventually. I thought I, I thought I read something after that initial announcement that was like, no, it's exclusive forever. Who knows anymore? Like, I yeah. hate that we even have to have this discussion, but I... We're not the biggest Street Fighter fans. C- clearly, yeah. you know we're not gonna. We're not? Yeah, uh, <laughs> just as much as we love hit GTA Four. Um, oh. I, I'm a little disappointed that they the game at least the trailer that they showed, the uh, art style is not significantly different from Four. Mm. Are you surprised? I I kind of am because I I, I feel like. The leap between three and four was a big in the art style. Obviously, like now we have polygons for for the game, but I kind of feel like if you're gonna make another numbered entry in the series, like you really should come out with something that looks different than four did. Because I think yeah. the question right now is, why should I get five when f- a, the another version of four just came out like two months ago? Because it's Capcom, it's what they do. I thought they were better than this. No, they're not. I know, it's, it hurts no. me. <laughs> <sighs> Curses. So, I'm academically curious to see what that game is. Because Street Fighter 4 now has like 557 characters, so what are you going to do with 5? Who knows? Yep. Bring it back down to 12. But at least there in the gameplay uh, trailer, it wasn't Ryu versus Ken. It was Ryu versus Chun Li, which I thought was yeah. kind of cool. Uh, Katam- Katamari Damacy creator showed off his new game Wat Watam, Wat I don't know. Uh, game- All right, who is stretching the moon? Yeah, uh, he says a game full of quote unquote interesting people. That's that's really yeah. it. That's, that's all we have. Nice. <laughs> so, uh, King's Quest. They finally showed a trailer for that, made by the Odd Gentleman, the team who made the Misadventures of PB Winterbottom. Uh, it looks a lot like uh, a Telltale game, graphically. Yep. Um, yeah. And it looks like it has kind of maybe a little bit more... I don't want to say action, I don't want to say platforming, but it looks like there's maybe a little bit more than the King's Quest games typically had. Um, mm-hmm. I'm kind of interested in that game. Well, granted, it's only been, what, 30 years? <laughs> yeah, you know, about 357 years. Um uh, that that seems kind of cool. I, I think I might give that a shot when it comes out. I I was the Lucas Arts camp. I was not the Sierra camp growing up. 
Ah, I love them both. Um, yeah, we, I didn't. I was so like, yeah, Lucas Arts. Um, King's Quest Zork, come on. Oh, Zork, man. Um, so I might, I might check that out when it comes out. Uh, next up, uh, David Jaffe's new indie studio, the Bartlett Jones Supernatural Detective Agency. That's not the name of the game. That's the name of their studio, by the way. I don't that's know. That's fantastic. I don't know how we missed that because I would have totally talked about it on the show. Right. The game they're showing was called Drawn to Death. Um, it's a four-player uh, multiplayer uh, arena shooter with an art style of like a kid's high school notebook doodles. So it looks sort of like if you like metal music and you were drawing in the the um, in your high school notebook. Uh, that's what would come out. I don't want to crap on a game that's not even really close to release. Uh, the art content of that game has completely turned me off from really? minute one in that trailer. Wow. It just, it looks like, it looks like what people that only play Call of Duty think a AAA, think like an indie game looks like. <laughs> it just, uh, like, it just, it seems to miss the mark. I don't know. Uh, it's like they're trying too hard to be hip. It seems like they're trying too hard to be metal, but yeah. like missing it, like missing That's the a point. Shame. Uh, no Man's Sky showed off uh, new gameplay trailers. Still looks good. Still don't know what that game's all about, but it, space, space. I love space, space. Um, <laughs> Enter the Gungeon. It's another game that they showed off that I, I haven't seen before. Some sort of pixel-based top-down shooter. Uh, looks a lot like Nuclear Throne, that same Ooh. sort of uh, shooting. Um, has a really great and really fun trailer where the character says, you know, we're going to go in the dungeon and we're going to find a gun that shoots through time. And then it shows this crazy trailer. Um, I'm it, cool with that. It seems like a really great like tongue-in-cheek kind of uh, pixel-based uh, game. Uh, Sky Torn, uh, another indie game, a procedurally generated Metroidvania featuring a heroine with a shovel. Um, that looks surprisingly really good, and I will play the crap out of a procedurally generated Metroidvania. That sounds super weird. All of those, all of those words are things that I like together. Yeah. I don't know when the fun of <laughs> the uh, Metroidvania game is knowing the layout. Not you. Sh not when it comes to like a uh, Rogue Legacy. That was one of Rogue yeah. Legacy's strong points was. Absolutely. You know, it, it was small enough bite size that you could go through and kind of explore the dungeon without it being like, oh, God, another couple hours and maybe I'll be able to finish. So yeah. that's what I'm hoping for that one. Uh, they announced a couple of crazy uh, RPG news. Uh, Suikoden 2 is finally coming to PSN December 9th. So yeah. now I can finally play what is hailed as one of the greatest RPGs of all time. Hopefully it's still good. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. Uh, Square Enix pulled a super troll and showed Final Fantasy VII for PS4, the PC port. <laughs> <laughs> uh, apparently the internet exploded when they started showing Final Fantasy VII. And it was like, finally! And at the end it's like the PC version. And it was just like... <laughs> it's like someone let go a balloon in a room and it just... Yeah. All over it. Square, oh, come on. The those jerks. <laughs> so, the PC version of Final Fantasy VII, if you have never played that game, is actually a pretty good version, and we'll have all the graphical updates at, as they were, um, and then we'll have achievements and the um, the super leveling system they came out with. I might live stream that. I might try to play through that for real again, and and all of you can share in my misery. Sounds good. So. And hopefully it's cheap like it was on PC, where it was like around 10, 10 bucks. Nice. Uh, Double Vine came out to talk about a lot of stuff, and a lot of stuff that was surprising. Uh, Grim Fandango Remastered comes out in January for PS4 and PS Vita. Super nice. Um, yeah. I don't know when it comes out on PC. I know people are going to be like, well, I can't, can't believe PC. They're not talking about it right now because it's the PlayStation experience. So yeah, just calm down. hold on. Yeah. Uh, Day of the Tentacle Special Edition coming out for PS4 and PS Vita. The one LucasArts game that I haven't played. I am so excited. They're like like special like remastering it or no, don't just know. releasing it. Don't know. Either way would be great. Um and then Broken Age coming out for PS4 and PS Vita coming alongside the second episode of, uh, uh on PC in 2015. Sweet. Ah, oh, some so, Vita love in there. That's awesome. Yeah, man, double fine. Keep on keeping on, man. I can't wait to play that game on a Vita. 
Yeah. yeah. Oh, I cannot wait. It's going to be super good. Um, surprisingly, Yakuza 5 is coming to North America and Europe. The game that was never supposed to come out over here. Hmm. So, good on them. Also, Yakuza 4 and Dead Souls are available on the PSN store right now. Cool. So, wow. That shouldn't have happened. Everybody was saying, like, nah, they don't care about us anymore. That's just Yakuza <laughs> fans, whatever. So, I might play Yakuza 5. Is it sweet? I'll start with the fifth one. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I haven't played any of them either. Yeah, I tried yeah, playing one. Here. I have it, but the intro was pretty slow. Yeah. So... Maybe I'll try five again. Uh, Shovel Knight will be coming to PS4, PS3, and Vita in 2015. Yay! The game is awesome. Buy Shovel yes, Knight. It I, yeah, so I've been waiting for this. That's why I haven't played it yet. Yeah, you you have saved yourself for for a good reason. Yes. <laughs> um, and last but not least, Bastion is coming to PS4 and PS Vita in 2015. Yes. If you have not played Bastion, also I'm gonna play, play Bastion. It again. Yeah, I will probably play it again. That game is good. I yeah, never did the other ending. No, oh yeah, have. no. I think I did both of them. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, uh, so good. Yeah, I, I. You know what, Sony? If you want to do two E threes a year, please do. Yeah, you know, this like, is yeah, awesome. I I feel like they didn't have a lot of really great stuff coming out this November, mm-hmm. and I feel like they were like, yeah, we know. Let's show you some new stuff. Two hours of new stuff. It's sort of like, yeah. well, okay. You all right? I wasn't even mad at you before, but now I love you even more. <laughs> so uh, you know, I I really love that more companies are doing this stuff. I love that Nintendo has their monthly Nintendo Direct. I yep. love that. I hope that Sony does something every six months. Microsoft, yep. you're doing a really great job, but you need to. I, I would like to see more out of you more often. Um, you know, pl- also please keep fixing Xbox One. You're doing a really great job. Um, yep. But man, I just. I like Sony just being like, I don't know, man, we got some stuff to show, and then just dropping all of this cool stuff. Yeah, keep, dropping some hotness. Keep doing that. That's super yeah. cool. Uh, all right, but that's all we have for news stories, so let's move on to Twitter tweets. Tweets? Twitter? Uh, Poke Chop Salad writes, uh, just listen to episode 371, hoarding bricks just makes it sound like Knobs is terrible at basketball. <laughs> that's pretty good <laughs> I don't think Nobbs is bad at basketball there's no way I am pretty bad at basketball oh, well curses that's why I wrestled in high school there you go hey. and then you played baseball uh, next person super lobster 06 uh, said listening to episode 371 uh, so happy to hear others who think Halo is just okay nothing against fans but I've never cared for the series hey man we got your back Halo is okay <laughs> you know, I think if that's what you took away from it. That you're more positive than I am. I, I have always prided this show on um, trying to be fair about a lot of games, and we don't love Halo, but at least academically, we can see. All right, I know why these games are popular, and we can respect what they've done for console gaming. Everything's cool, just not my cup of tea. Yeah, everything's okay. Yeah. Uh, All right, let's move on to emails. Uh, Chris H. writes in uh, for something for the mailbag episode last week that we didn't, uh, last time that we didn't quite get to. Uh, Says, hey, TVGB, congrats, Boston. Thank you. Uh, Hey, guys, Angel Eye here. I've got a few things I meant to send for the last episode, but I seem to have procrastinated too long. Uh, to, so to start, I browse the web a bit and read the comments on video game articles. Often I occasionally see a comment like this, quote, I want to get into game development someday because games do things other media can't, end quote. Now the people that make these comments never explain what they exactly mean. I've been thinking about games, uh, what they do that other outlets can't, only I can't seem to come to a satisfying answer. Um... Uh, aside from quote-unquote gameplay, uh, they really ca- aren't so different much of the time from games. Bi- Mo- aren't so different much of the time. A game's biggest difference is minimized to allow the narrative to exist. Some of the best games give the illusion of choice or control to create a fun and fulfilling experience. An example: the Mass Effect games are not s- not much different from a choose-your-own-adventure book, aside from the third-person uh, action bits. Uh, those games could easily have been movies, books, or TV show. The only difference about this medium is the gameplay, the ability to interact with a narrative or characters at your own pace. 
Uh, what are your thoughts? What makes games different from other forms of media, and am I missing something? How would you like to see games evolve to be dimmer, similar differences to books and movies, or would you rather they take a different approach? Um, I feel like the, the, probably the thing that sets games aside is the illusion of choice. Yep. Yeah. And and obviously gameplay. Obviously, you you're not playing a movie. You're you're mm-hmm. experiencing this vision of a, a team of people that have made something which is why i always hesitate to make the correlation between games and movies because mm-hmm. at their at their core they are fundamentally controlled differently um but ga- games are different because of the illusion of choice or at least the you know i i'm i'm i i'm i don't know how many dozens of hours through binding of isaac rebirth that's not something you can make in another like you can't read a book that changes every time that you read it you know like the plot is slightly different every time you read this book you know choose your own adventure books aside but you know i don't i don't know how i don't know what else how else you quantify how they're different Uh, well i mean it's the interactive experience the vehicle that you're using to to portray your experiences user input like whether it seems the the gameplay is superfluous or not yeah it's still you're still participating in it in some way yeah yeah i think that's the biggest difference is you're whether you're in control of what happens in the story or not but you're part of the vehicle that progresses progresses that narrative along yeah um, I mean, as far as the major differences between the two, it's definitely the interactivity uh, is the big one, but it's also the perspective. Um, with a movie, you can sort of, you're sort of, it's, 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 when you're viewing a movie, you are viewing it absolutely as an outsider mm-hmm. um, anytime you're viewing a movie. But when you're playing a game, you can be literally thrown in the middle of the action. Yeah. Um, and they've tried to do this in movies where they put you in the middle of the action, but it doesn't always work. Um, especially like, you know, the uh, type of games where you, or the type of movies where you have, uh, like, take Cloverfield, for example, where it's shaky cam all yeah. the time. Mm. And just, this is from my perspective, it doesn't work as effectively as it does in a game. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's really the the, um, the the sort of the I'm trying to think of the term and it's just not coming to me for some reason. Um, but your uh, where you're viewing it from, your perspective your is point of view. different. Point of view. There it is. Yeah. Aha. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Your point of view uh-huh. is completely different between a movie and a game. That's a good point. Yeah. And yeah. I, you know, I feel like when these people are saying like games can do things other media can't. Yeah. I mean, yeah and no. That sounds like a little bit of navel gazing you know yeah. or shoe gazing too you know like it's it sounds a little bit self-important like yeah of course there are games that are doing things that other games can't but you know it doesn't have to be that you know it doesn't have yeah. to be like well, i'm gonna do this important stuff over here making games and it's like uh. you know uh, it's okay you know uh, his next question is, on another podcast, a question was posed to the host about Android and iOS games slash apps, about how they seem to want more and more information to allow you to install them. For uh, to install them, for example, a solitaire game needing your contact info to be installed. How much attention do you pay to this? Uh, where do you think the line too far is? Uh, and what is the equation of value to cost? Um, so this is really interesting. A lot of this came to head because... This company uh, came out a couple weeks ago and said, like, these flashlight apps are stealing your information. Um, and they were, they were showing that, uh, you know, you could install this flashlight app on Android specifically. Um, it would ask for, like, your lock screen permission and your SERP browsing history and your contact info and all this stuff. Um, and eventually, of course, as it does in the tech sector, it came to light that this company was making their own flashlight app. So we're going to throw all these other flashlight apps under the under the bus. Um, interestingly enough, uh, on Reddit, uh, someone who makes one of these apps came out and said, OK, here's the reason why I need all these permissions. Like, I need lock screen permissions so you can open the flashlight from your lock screen. I need some of this other stuff because I have to support stuff that's existing in really old versions of Android. And at yeah. that point, the only way I could get to this stuff was like through your browsing history in a really weird way. Yeah. Um, and the, the uh, app developer was saying like, look, if you don't want to give me these permissions, then don't. 
Like, don't download my app. Like, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll give you the I'll give you the info and I'll give you the history and I'll give you all this stuff. But you you're the one that chooses it at the end of the day. Like, if you're installing a solitaire game and they want access to your contact list, don't install it. Yeah, like yeah. find a solitaire game. There's probably 500 that doesn't do that because they don't need that. So yeah, and generally they're not going to ask for your direct contact list. They're going to ask you to log in with Facebook or Google Plus because that's a much much mm-hmm. uh, richer source of information for them. Because mm-hmm. I mean, the contacts you're getting like depends on how detailed you keep your contacts. Like for me, it's mostly first name, last name, phone number. That's it. Yeah. I don't have like a, a, a large list of people where I have, you know, full addresses and email addresses. I keep that on like Facebook. Yeah, and if uh, a yeah. solitaire game is asking you to log in as Facebook, also don't install that solitaire game. <laughs> yeah, pro- probably don't. Yeah, um, I, it depends on the game. Like, there's certain games where like the Facebook permissions are just like, oh, hey, we want to, uh, you know, just uh, see share your profile your so that we can, yeah, share your yeah. scores and things like that. Like, that's okay. Yeah. I mean. And it's my personal line for that stuff is very. I mean, you'd have to do something real egregious. It'd be like I don't make phone calls as you, and it's like, well, well yeah, that one's yeah. real weird. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just tired of getting notifications to play Candy Crush. Like, yeah, I, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, you're so the, the hard part about this is, I work in IT, and and the biggest piece of advice I can give you is, you know what's on your device, and you know how important that is. You have to read these things, and if you feel like it's pushing a little too far, don't install it. Yeah. You, you probably don't need it, because everything you really need is built into the OS, both on iOS and Android and Windows Phone. So, like, if, if something's coming in and asking for something too much, you don't have to install it. Mm-hmm. You don't have to say yes. <laughs> so yeah. just say no. Yeah, Coop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Cooper says, secure your stuff. <laughs> Uh, all right, let's move on to our last email uh, here this week uh, from Matt Crane, a.k.a. Gavacho13, a.k.a. the dude who's done really cool art for uh, TVGP and Dynamic Soundtrack. So, Hey, uh, thanks, guy. Yes, thanks. Your stuff is great. <laughs> thanks, uh, guy. And uh, Sesame Street Fighter. Uh, oh, yeah. I should, I should, yeah. That webcomic's awesome. Yeah, it's he's got that webcomic. It's really good. Go check out his stuff. His stuff's good. Uh, he says, hey guys, just want to let you know that I recently beat Castlevania Symphony of the Night 193% and freaking loved it. First nice. off, 193% is really great. That's almost the max. So yep. you you scraped you the that. bottom of the barrel on that game. Yeah. Uh, I know I'm preaching to the choir here, uh, but this game impressed and entertained me on so many levels. The incredible artwork and animation, the razor-sharp controls, the exploration, the enemy variety. I mean, yes, you are correct on all of those. Also, the music. Don't forget about yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, it's Whoa. funny because I actually had a phone conversation with Nobs years ago and he brought this game up and told me how great it was. I also had a college roommate who played it and told me how great it was. I owned a PS1 and I currently own a PS2, PS3, and a PSP. So considering all of this Man. and the fact that I'm listening to TVGP for years, you guys gush about this game almost as much as you do Alpha Protocol. Wink. Almost. Yeah. <laughs> I have to ask myself the obvious question. Why did it take me so long to play this? <laughs> I don't know, but I'm glad I finally got around to it. I was wondering if you guys would not would want to talk about any games that might be on your own. Why didn't I play the Sooner list on the show? Might make for interesting discussion. Uh, also, if you want to suggest any other Metrovania games, oh, we'll get to that next. Um, yes. So why <laughs> didn't I play this Sooner list? That's a real tough list to put together because I play as much of the stuff as I can. <laughs> yeah, I feel like every once in a while there's a game where it's like, man, I went back to this, and it was really good. Yeah. Maybe for me was Half-Life 2. Ooh. Because I didn't play it until, like, the second year of TVGP. Yeah. And I think I went on the show and I was like, hey, guys, this game's really good. Have you played <laughs> Half-Life 2? <laughs> <laughs> That's a cliffhanger, huh? <laughs> so that's what everyone was talking about. Yeah, and then you get man. a new expansion, then it stops at episode two. You're like, Poor wait Alex, a guys. minute. That's probably one of my bigger ones. Um, the original Deus Ex, for me. Oh, yeah. Uh, it took me forever to get my hands on that, and that was real good when I played it. I was probably two or three years behind on that one. Oh, God, you know what? Morrowind. 
Oh, there you go. That's my biggest. That's probably my biggest one because at, at the time it came out, it was on the original Xbox. It was on PC. I had access to it. I had a bunch of friends that were like, "Hey, man, hey, man, you really like this game? You really dig this game? Check it out." And I'm like, eh, "Cat people." Yeah. Yeah. That was sort of my. That was basically my reaction at the time. Yeah. Uh, which was a real dumb reaction, but I, I went back and played it like in earnest, probably two, three years ago now, uh, really sat down and tried to play it, and man, that I can see why everyone gushes about that game. Yeah. Uh, Homeworld was another Ooh, one I waited yeah. years and years to play. Oh, that yeah. game was good. And man, that game blew me away. Um, uh, I was trying to think of anything else that was like that. I don't know, we, we, we typically stay on top of the majority of games as they go. Yeah. Well, I probably got two big ones. I got the, uh, whatchamacallit, the Infamous series and um, Uncharted. Mm. <laughs> I still haven't played either yeah, one of those. Yeah, yeah. I still have something like Earthbound. You know, like I haven't played any Earthbound, uh, any of that game, and that game's supposed to be outstanding. Yeah. Um, I still haven't played like Dark Souls or any of those games, and I think I would really dig yeah. those. To a point, yeah. I'm doing my part by buying them. There you go. I know, yeah, I I know what I know what those games have entailed for me. Same thing with like a, like a Skyrim or like like Dragon Age. Like those games, just if if if, if a game like Alpha Protocol can consume me that much, mm -hmm. imagine what an expansive world would do. Yeah. Oh exactly. yeah. Uh, uh, so he finishes here, uh, and if you want to suggest any Metro, other Metrovania games that might be almost as good, but obviously that's a tough order, I'd love to get some recommendations. So you came to the right podcast. Let's yeah, start. You did. Guacamole. Yes. Guacamole is outstanding. Um, let's keep... Shadow Complex. Shadow Complex. Ah, that's a great one, too. Uh, Castlevania Order of Ecclesia. Uh, Order of Ecclesia, um, I will always go to um, Aria of Sorrow yep. first. Yeah, uh, always. Almost all of them that are Metroidvanias after Symphony of the Night are good. Yeah. yeah. Portrait, of, Portrait of Ruin is Dawn, great. Portrait of Ruin. Dawn of everyone, Sorrow is really good. Everyone complains about that one being too easy. I loved that one. It's I nice did to too. have an easy one. Yeah, it was real good. And uh, the fact Plus that, you like, got a little buddy to yeah. go yes. around with here. You got the little bunny and the uh, the fact that you have to get that one specific item in that one specific place, or you don't really beat the game. Yep. Yeah. That was fun. <laughs> uh, Metroid Zero Mission. It's a remake of the very first Metroid game. It's really good. And Metroid Fusion. Metroid Fusion is outstanding. Metroid Fusion is a good game. I think Fusion is a little bit better. Yeah. Um, let's keep looking. Symphony of the Night, of, of course. Play the other modes of Symphony of the Night. Play like uh, Maria and Richter. Oh, it yeah. changes the game pretty significantly. Yeah, Richter's kind of hard. Richter's, Richter's pretty hard. Uh, on PC, there's Valdis Story, Abyssal City. I started that, and it seems pretty good, actually. Yeah, it's fairly solid. There's been a yeah, lot of, yeah. there's been a lot of Metroidvanias, and I'm trying to remember um, a lot of them here. Um, oh, Outland. Oh, Outland's really good. I wish Outland, I had finished yeah. it. Super good. It just came out on PC recently, like within the last six months. Here's another one on my incredible pile of shame, and I almost don't want to say it, but Super oh, Metroid. Yeah? Oh, really? No, never played that. Oh, that's I one of the best played ones. That one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've played that one. That's good stuff. Uh, we already said Guacamole. Oh, even Kamele. like the Mega Man X series is pretty Metroidvania ish. Uh, a bit, yeah. yeah, a little bit, yeah. Wonder Boy and Monster World, if you want to go really, really old. Mm. <laughs> um, I'm trying to find a, like a good list of Metroidvanias here. Yeah, it's tough to do. I found I found an okay one. Here's one for games on Steam. Uh, let's see if there's any good ones. There's so many good. Uh, La Mulana is a, a really interesting one. Boss, I can't believe we haven't said this yet. Dust and Elysian Tail. Oh, pff. yeah. How did I forget <laughs> that? That game is right? outstanding. Yeah. Uh, the new Shantae game. Is a oh, Mor Moramasa is pretty good too. Yeah, Moramasa is pretty good. Actually, Shovel Knight is kind of a mini Metroidvania. Rogue Legacy is a rogue, uh, rogue like. Uh, Odin Sphere. Odin Sphere is 
It's kind of side scrollery, but it's still fun. There in a really yeah. weird way, but that game is outstanding. You should play it anyway. Yeah, it's like it's it's in the same level as like Dragon's Crown. Yes. Yeah. Um, man, I'm, I don't want to spend too much more time on this, but I want to. Um, almost want to. Someone listed Dark Siders two here. <laughs> kind of not, but that's a good game anyway. Cave yeah. Story. Cave Ooh, Story yeah. is a. a, a, a Oh, Aquaria. That's a super old game for a PC, but that uh that's a that's a Metroidvania. And so is actually Batman Arkham Asylum. Yeah. I was gonna say the swapper is very Metroidvania esque. Yep. Uh V. Uh that game with the six V's in it. Uh that's actually oh, a Metroidvania. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a little tough. <laughs> yeah. Man, so many great Metroidvanias. Ah. They're all good. Alright, off topic here. Is it Otagi, is that from software? Yes. Yeah. Okay. The the Demon Souls peeps. Yeah. So is right. Armored Core. And so is Ninja Blade. So is Ninja Blade. A very diverse catalog from that company. Yeah, they got some weird stuff. Yeah. I still remember that Ninja Blade suplex and that giant spider. That oh, metal man. metallic spider. We always love people suplexing really big stuff. TVP. <laughs> How can you go wrong? Yep. You really can't. All right, that's all of our tweets and emails for this week. Uh, thank you very much, everyone, for writing in. You can find us at tvgp.tv. Email us, tvgpfans at gmail.com. Tweet us at tvgp and everything else is in right hand center. And don't forget to join the forums. Please mark yourselves on the map. Join us for Monday Night Game Night. That is 10 p.m. EST. And our cavalcade time on Friday, it's going to happen. Just hop in and join us. Yep. Uh, Thursday night game night, Steam game night, uh, and Wednesday night is PS4 night. Yeah, uh, they're trying to get a resurgence of uh, when uh, th- I think Thursday night PC gaming night. Yep. Uh, on the forums, so take a look out for that. We're gonna hopefully try and get that to be a more regular thing. It's been pretty sporadic and spotty lately. Yeah. Uh, current TVGP game club game is Deus Ex Human Revolution, regular or director's cut. It, the choice is yours. The choice is yours, yes. The dealer's choice. Uh, dealer's choice. And don't forget, you can watch this show live, twitch.tv slash E1M1 Network. Thank you very much, everyone, for listening and everyone in chat for chatting. We'll see you all uh, next week. Later. Peace. I only have one title. Uh, nobody wins, everybody dies. <laughs> That's good. Uh, let me expand this giant list. Hold on, I've got a very bored puppy on my lap. Hi, Cooper. <laughs> it's like, I'm bored! I'm bored! We have another episode to record, Cooper. It's not going to get much more exciting. No. Oh, look, you found my shoe. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> 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 uh, this one would be an hour, though. That's yeah, that would be too bad. Uh, so I've only got a few here. Uh, those little moments connected, K-I-N-E-C-T-E-D. Uh, uh, three types of beggars. It's not KOTOR. Uh, I'm slicing crabs. Open world in chunks, uh, more than a trophy, uh, land on a dude with my fists, and now we have polygons. Oh, I forgot about now we have polygons. That's a pretty good one. Uh, so Jay-Z, uh, of course, picking up the slack as usual here. Uh, always Tuck, uh, Why Is It Still Destiny, Grounding It Out Via a Public Event, uh, Condensed Grinding, You Guys Are Listening, Destiny's TLC, uh, If You Keep That Promise, I'm Gonna Like You, the Radical, R-E-D-I-C-L-E. Oh, about Tales from the Borderlands. Yeah. Uh, wow. I'm not colorblind and I can't see this. There's no happy ending here. Deciding on Minutia. Uh, the Blinding of Isaac. Dodging the Dark Colored Beggars. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, come on. <laughs> I didn't tell me I didn't say that. No, I don't think anyone did. <laughs> Okay. I don't think those uh, that sentence literally came out of my mouth. I do not. I don't think. So. It, I think. I think those the words may have in different orders. Yeah, I think. I think someone. <laughs> the there's a lot art- of periods. That's on Jay Z. That's a little that's artistic license. Yeah. yeah. The inevitable Isaac spiral. Uh, Drag Inquisition. Now this is super cool. Yay! I'm slicing crabs. Uh, clunky and boring and in my way. Number one adventurer. Triology. <laughs> the worst mini game ever. It's all about math, making Mario stuff, first dogs, now co-op, it's Saturday, let's have E3, <laughs> landing on a dude with my fist. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, it's Saturday, what do you want to do today? I want to have, have E3. Yeah. E3 in December. Uh, five, 557 characters, trying too hard to be metal, a gun that shoots through time, that shouldn't have happened, bad skitball, Halo, okay, uh, illusion of choice, 
choose your own matricide, uh, flashlights under the bus, you probably don't need it, and I think, yeah, that looks like it. All right, so I have nobody wins, everybody dies, now we have mm-hmm. polygons and triology. Triology. Well, dude, number one adventurer, man. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I am a number one adventurer. <laughs> so which one wins out of all those? Uh. Each one, adventurer. <laughs> Knob seems pretty adamant. Okay. No, I don't care. <laughs> I like triology. I really, I'm a big really fan. like triology. I, I'm a big fan of triology. All right. See, that, I cannot believe I missed that. That's of the, that group. That's the worst <laughs> missed opportunity ever. Right. All right. Starting in three, two, one. This is That Video Game Podcast, episode 372 for December 8th, 2014. Triology. Ichiban. Objection. All right, thank you very much, everyone, for watching. Uh, We are actually going to record another episode right now. We're going to go record the top ten episode. We are not live streaming this, but I will... Who's changing? What's that? Are we we still recording video? Uh, Yes, we're going to record... I'm changing my shirt. Okay, that is is your prerogative. So I'll throw a hoodie on. (laughs) When this episode, when the top ten episode comes out, it will be on YouTube but we're just not live streaming it now because it's not going to come out for like three weeks so yeah uh but thank you very much everyone for watching we'll see you next week bye